evening. A very warm welcome to you all this morning and to those of you joining us at home for our live stream. It's good to have you with us today. Um, I've got a couple of notices to let you know about. Um, just a reminder, um, you see on the... On the um, slides that uh, we have coffee mornings on Saturdays but just to let you know that we won't be having any coffee mornings during August um, so the last one for the summer will be next Saturday and then uh, they will resume again in September uh, we have a couple of our charity events coming up in the autumn. We have a tabletop sale on the 23rd of September. And if you are interested in having a table for that, then do please um, speak to Jean about that. And we also have a quiz evening um, with a fish and chip supper on the 14th of October. And there are leaflets out in the meeting area. If you want to sign up for a quiz for that, then it would be lovely to um, have you take part in that. And of course, all proceeds from those will be going to our um, church charity for this year, which is Communicare Counselling Service. So, so let us start our service today with our call to worship. God has been with us through the week just gone, in all the joys and the, all the sorrows. Let us come together and worship God as creator and sustainer of all things and as our constant companion in all things. Almighty God, we thank you for all the times and places where we have seen you at work this week. Come and reveal yourself to us again now, that we might be strengthened in our faith and renewed in our trust of you. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is from Singing the Faith, number 609, as we gather in your presence now. If you might remember the last time I chose this, I forgot <laughs> there was a chorus. You'll be pleased to know the chorus will be included today, um, now that I know there is a chorus. <laughs> so please do stand and sing.
Let us turn to God in prayer. Blessed and loving God, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God of Rebecca and Rachel and Mary and Jesus, we worship and praise you, faithful, trustworthy God. We praise you for your commitment to the world you love. We praise you for your promises to bring salvation and healing to your world. We praise you that in Jesus Christ, heaven and earth are connected and bound together, open to each other and united in your love. Lord, we need you to open up a way between heaven and earth, for our world lies separated from you, turned in upon itself, resistant to you. And we confess that we are turned in ourselves as we turn away from you and from our neighbour and from your call. Lord, come to us in your forgiving love. Open our lives to you and your Holy Spirit and make us your dwelling place. Amen. And we pray together the words that Jesus taught us as we say together. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and give us our sins. And we forgive those who live against us. Save us from our time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory of us all. And now Teresa is going to come and read our Bible reading for this morning. reading is from Genesis chapter 28, Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until you have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early in the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Lutz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Teresa. Our service this morning is the second service in our Frontline Sunday series of services that we're doing at the moment. And last time we reflected on how we're only in church in this building for a very short time each week. And this is our time as a gathered church. This is when we come together um, to 
learn from each other, to learn to listen to God, to focus and to empower each other and um, to be equipped for the rest of our time. Because the rest of our time, we're a scattered church. We're not here. We're out about in our workplaces. We're out about in our community. We're in our homes. And the places where we are in our lives outside of the church, uh, what we referred to last time and what we will continue to refer to as our front lines. Last time we were here doing the Frontline Sunday series, we created a map. This is where our church is during the week. This is our scattered church. These are our front lines. Where we are during the week, those red dots, all those places, they matter hugely to God. They matter just as much, if not more, than the time we spend in this building because what we do in our everyday lives has value. And I'm going to show a um, short video now which talks a little bit more about our front lines during the week and looks at um, a few people and going out into their own front lines. And then later on, we're going to reflect a little bit more about what that might mean for us as we go out into our own front lines during the week. So can we have the video, please? Ten hours a day. Six days a week. Whenever I'm needed. Every Saturday morning. I spend my time. In a place that matters to God. With people that matter to God. My front line. In the stresses. Successes. Problem solving. Tantrum resolving. <laughs> Laughter. Teamwork. Jokes. Tears. Boredom. Tension. Cups of coffee. Cans of coke. God is working with me. He helps me see what he sees. Put here by God. He knows the day ahead. This place is rich with possibilities. This is my front line. These are all our front lines, the places where we are during the week with the people that matter to God, the places that matter to God. And we're going to continue to reflect on that in our next hymn. Um, there is no moment of my life, no place where I may go, no action which God does not see, no thought which God does not know. Before we start singing our hymn, um, I'd just like to invite those of you that may not have been at the service when we put our dots on the map last time, if you would like to come forward and place a dot on the map where you are during the week, um, please do feel free to do so. The map is being displayed in our meeting area um, and there will be a display to go alongside it later on in the summer. But there are some red dots over there. Our church is about here. It's right in the middle of the map. It's a bit difficult maybe to see exactly where you are, but have a rough idea of where you might be during the week and pop it on the map. If you are outside of the map, and many of us are, just pop a little dot towards the edge roughly in the direction where you are. But if you haven't yet popped your dot on the map, please do feel free to come forward during this hymn and add your dot to our map.
heard in our Bible reading this morning about an encounter which Jacob had with God. And encounters with God are transformative. They happen in the course of life with all its ups and downs. They happen in the places in which we find ourselves regularly. And they happen in the places in which we find ourselves unexpectedly. Jacob's encounter with God in our reading happens at a time when he is in serious conflict with his brother Esau. Jacob has tricked Esau out of his birthright, and now Esau wants to kill him. So Jacob has run away. And as he stops to rest for the night, he encounters God. And inside a church building, it's quite easy to stand and talk about people encountering God. But outside of church, perhaps we might be a little bit more suspicious about that kind of talk. We might ask a few more questions, or we might dismiss this kind of encounter as just a dream, or explain it as being due to the stress that Jacob was under. But throughout the Bible, there are many, many stories of people encountering God. They're through dreams, they're through visions, or they're through meetings, or various other ways of experiencing the presence of God. We don't always think about encountering God in ordinary places. We come to church, we might go into a cathedral, and we might think that these are the holy places. These are the places where we expect to come and we expect to encounter God and to meet with God. But actually, the ordinary places, most of the encounters that we read about in the Bible, they are all in very ordinary places or in places where people least expect to have an encounter with God. For instance, with Moses, there was the burning bush. With Elijah, he expected to find God in the wind or in the fire or in the earthquake. But actually, it was in a very still small voice, a whisper at the entrance of a cave. Zacchaeus met Jesus when he was climbing up a tree. The woman at the well was just going about her daily tasks. The first disciples that Jesus called, they were just doing their ordinary everyday job. Mary Magdalene looked for Jesus in the tomb and then found him standing behind her. And after the resurrection, the disciples found Jesus cooking breakfast for them on the beach. So encounters with God can take place absolutely anywhere. And there are people today who will share their stories of encountering God in very unexpected places, in prisons, um, in their workplaces, in hospitals, in their homes, whilst out on a walk. And for all of these people, the encounter with God transforms them. But going back to Jacob, this was just an ordinary place to stop for the night. But through Jacob's encounter with God, it became extraordinary became a touching place between heaven and earth. And these touching places are places which we might refer to now as thin places. They're the places where heaven and earth seem to come closer together. Jacob is so transformed by this encounter, he decides to rename the place where he has this encounter with God, and he calls it Bethel, the house of God, and marks it with a stone. Because for Jacob, this very, very ordinary place, has now become holy. And in the video that we saw earlier, we are reminded that our ordinary places, our everyday workplaces, the places we go throughout the week, they can be, become holy too through um, reframing them, through looking at them and reminding them ourselves that God is present with us wherever we go. God is, has a purpose for us. The people we meet matter to God. What we do in those places matter to God. And just as Jacob tells, uh, God says to Jacob, he says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And God is with us too, wherever we go and whatever we do. And finally, Jacob encountered God when he stopped to rest. And perhaps for us, that is a reminder that we too need to slow down sometimes, that we can get very distracted by the busyness of life, but sometimes we too need times where we can slow down and stop, where we can take time to reflect, and we can allow ourselves to become aware of God's presence, being still and knowing. Be still and know that I am God. 
And as we go about our own lives this week, may we too be aware of God's presence with us, working with us, and being open to where God may be leading us in our own front lines this week. As we think about our own front lines, I'd like to invite Kathy to come forward. And we're going to talk a little bit about Kathy's front line and where she is during the week. So, Kathy, tell us, where will you be this time tomorrow? This time tomorrow, I will be at Ivor Environment Centre, where I'm Senior Education Officer. And we have a community explorers session, mm -hmm. which is basically a drop-in session where people can come in and pot around our, well, somewhere between two and a half and four acres, depending which piece of paper you read. So people are invited in to make a donation to the charity and then just spend time, hopefully in peace, although I think we may have a few children in the mud kitchen tomorrow. <laughs> so what do you like about it at the Environment Centre? Um, it's a combination of being somewhere that is restful um, in its environment, mm -hmm. um, but somewhere where I have contact with children and families and I can extend their knowledge about caring for the environment, um, but hopefully in a fairly fun way. Lovely. And it sounds like a lot of fun, but obviously there are stresses that go with that kind of environment too. So tell us, what, what is a pressure point there for um, you? Pressure point is staffing an hour's work. Mm -hmm. Um, we are a charity, mm -hmm. and um, although we get funding from various places, um, we only have one full-time member of staff and two part-time members of staff, including me, and, and a couple of people on zero hours contract. And actually, being able to provide enough opportunities, particularly with schools, mm -hmm. and and to work within our hours is virtually impossible. So the pinch point is offering a good service while not burning out. Mm -hmm. And one of our members of staff has been on a, a long sabbatical, and that's been quite tricky. Yeah. Although, in fact, it turns out it was slightly easier to manage when there are only two of us. Now there are three <laughs> of us again. There actually is more conflict mm -hmm. than there was. Not, not fisticuffs conflict. Yeah but it's less easy to draw a line, mm -hmm. particularly when the person who's come back is your line manager. Yes. <laughs> so what do you think God's purpose for you there right now might be? Uh, I think it's twofold. Mm -hmm. One is the engagement in a positive way with families and schools, mm -hmm. which are my two main areas of contact. Um, and just being a a place that's different. Mm -hmm. The other side of it is also um, the work we do on the wonders of the environment mm -hmm. and caring for the environment. And I think that's really important to share that with as many people as possible in a positive way. And hopefully that's what we're doing. Lovely. Excellent. How can we pray for you with your work there? Um, that we may find a way of managing people's hours so that nobody burns out. Yep. And that, and the funding that might go alongside that. Mm -hmm. And also that we just could continue to be a positive place, positive touching point for people we meet with. Lovely. Are you happy for me to pray for you now, Cathy? Yes. Let's pray together then. Loving God, we thank you for Kathy's work at the Environment Centre and for all that brings to the people that um, she encounters there. That this is a positive, may continue to be a positive touching point for the people that visit there. And Lord, we pray too for the stresses and the pressures that come with this place. We pray for the staffing, um, that they can find a way of managing their hours. Um, we pray for the funding that is needed. 
And we pray for um, your healing presence over the conflicts that, that come with ordinary people working together. But we thank you that you are present in all that Kathy does. And we thank you for her work. And we ask that you continue to guide her and to help that work be guided and directed by you and to show Kathy your purpose for her in that place. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. Out of curiosity, would anybody else like to share what they might be doing this time tomorrow? I won't ask you to come to the front and be grilled on this, or, or to, um, but if anybody else would like to share where their front line is during the week, what they might be doing tomorrow, then it would be lovely to hear some of those. Um, I'm happy to start off. I'm, tomorrow I will be at a dance festival with my daughter, um, so that, that will be quite, quite a full-on environment. But I will, as part of that, I will be teaching her to um, be welcoming and to be um, accepting of the way things go and um, working with others and creating a team spirit and things like that. So um, I think that sense of community is something that I feel is important with something like that. Um, does anybody else like to share where they'll be this time tomorrow, what they'll be doing? Did, did somebody have? No? <laughs> You're taking somebody shopping. Lovely. So, so tomorrow our church will be shopping and helping a friend shopping. They will be at a dance studio, they will be at an environment centre, anywhere else that our church will be tomorrow. Knit and natter group, lovely Val. So, shopping for friends and a knit and natter group. Any, anybody else like to share? Singing. Wonderful. Okay, so... You will be babysitting, yes, indeed, thank you. <laughs> so, so I can be at the dance festival, <laughs> and that is very, very important. <laughs> so you don't all have to share now, but when you came in this morning, you were given a postcard. Hopefully you were all given a postcard. If not, please do let me know. There, there are probably still some spares. Um, with three words on it, presence, pressure, and purpose, and... I would like you to take this card away. You don't have to fill it in now. You can fill it in if you would like to during the week, but just use it as an opportunity to think about your own front line, about how you experience God's presence with you there, what a pressure point for you, um, is, what pressure points there are for you there, and have a think about what God's purpose might be for you right there. So I encourage you to take those away today and, and use those during the week just to think about your own front lines and what God's purpose may be for you in those. So let's, but while we think about that, let's just come to God in prayer and we'll just bring all our front lines to God now. Loving God, we thank you for all the places where we are during the week. We thank you that our church is out there at a dance festival, at an environment centre, taking a friend shopping, at a knit and natter group, looking after grandchildren, going out into work. And we know that you have a purpose for us in all of those places, Lord. Help to open our eyes to what your purpose is for, for, for that place. Um, help us to be aware of your presence and the people that we encounter and help to ease any pressure points that we find in that environment, Lord. So we just ask you to bless all of us as we go out later on in the service and we go out throughout this week into our own front lines. Be with us all and help us be aware of your purpose for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're now going to sing again. Our next hymn is one that you, the words may not be familiar, but I would hope that the tune is, um, because the tune is um, Abide With Me. And um, we're now going to sing together, We Seek Your Kingdom Throughout Every Sphere. So please do stand if you are able to sing together.
to our time of our free will offering for the church. If you're new here and you're not familiar with this, this is when um, we pass a plate round to give our monetary offerings to the church um, for the work of the church. Um, it is a free will offering. Please do feel free to let the plate pass you by if you do not wish to give or you give it in other means. Um, but we are now going to take up our offering and Jean will then um, pray for that. praise as we give you our offerings. May the money that is collected be used for the ministry of this church to bring more souls into your kingdom and to nurture us spiritually. May it be used to support missions in the places of the world where people have little chance to hear your gospel. And may it be used in our local community for those who need a helping hand. Bless the ministries that these offerings support. Amen. And now we come to our prayers of intercession. And for our prayers of intercession, we're going to have a short piece of music. And as the music is playing, there is a basket of battery-powered candles. There's a switch underneath to turn them on. And what I would like you to do during this time, what I'm inviting you to do, we have a map of the world here, and we have our map of our local area. And I invite you to come forward, to take a candle from the, the basket, switch it on, and place it on the map of the world. If there's somewhere in the world you particularly want to pray for, on the map of our local community, if um, you wish to pray for something specific related to our community, or... At the foot of the cross, if you feel that that is more appropriate for whatever it is that you have in your heart that you would like to hold in prayer. So I invite you now, as the music is playing, to come forward and to take a candle and to place it on the map, either of the maps or at the foot of the cross.
God, we bring before you now the places in our world, the places in our local community, and the people and situations that we all hold in our prayers and our own minds. Lord, you know and hear all of those prayers that we have prayed today. We ask for your loving presence in all of those places. We ask for your healing. We ask for your strength. And Lord, as we go about our own week, help us to be aware of the needs around us and where we can be your hands and feet in the world, bringing hope and healing and strength to others. Amen. We now sing our final hymn this morning, um, which my brain's suddenly gone. <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't pick up my notes. Um, which is, Lord, you call us to your service. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Lord, you call us to your service, each in our own way. Some to caring, loving, healing. Some to preach or pray. Some to work with quiet learning, truth discerning day by day. Let's stand and sing together. that our everyday ordinary places matter to you and that we can make a difference there. We offer, you to, offer to you the places where we live, where we work, where we study and where we play. In those places, may we serve you and bear witness to you wherever we are this week. And may we know your presence with us in these places. Amen. And we close together by saying the grace to one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.